Wouldn't that be funny if I ended up liking Legends of Lattes better than Hyperion? <laughs> She's about to discover how bad retellings are. We are, I'm doing a read along with my patrons. How about that? June is upon us. It has actually been upon us now for a little while. I'm quite late on this TBR video. Meant to film it sooner, but uh, May was crazy, crazy, crazy. So here we are. I have technically started one of the books that are on my to be read, but I haven't finished any of them yet. So it is still to be read technically. Without further ado, let's chat about the books that I intend to read for the remainder of June. First up, I have The Golden Fool by Robin Hobb. This is the second book in the Tawny Man trilogy. Mara and I are continuing our Realm of the Elderlings journey uh, with this book and I'm excited for it. I heard so many people say that the Tawny Man trilogy is their favorite slash the best in the Realm of the Elderlings and we had a bit of a rocky start. I did not hate um, Fool's Errand by any means. It was a very good book, but it's so far probably my least favorite Hobb book that I've read disappointingly, especially when this particular series within this series is so hyped. So perhaps it was a matter of expectations um, being too high, although I don't think that is the case because expectations were very high for a live ship and it didn't disappoint. So I am excited to see where this goes and hopefully the things that I was not fully satisfied with in the first book will be present or those things will be different or improve or I'll finally I'll finally get hopefully or start to get why people love this trilogy above all the others or perhaps this is just destined to be yet another of Lana's bad takes <laughs> just add it to the list <laughs> next up I have the book that my patrons have chosen for me to read and vlog for them and that is Hyperion by Dan Simmons this book almost won last month and I was very disappointed and sad that it lost to Legends and Lattes <laughs> but it won for June so hopefully this doesn't disappoint um wouldn't that be funny if I ended up liking Legends of Lattes better than Hyperion? <laughs> I have heard obviously like, maybe not obviously, but I have heard a lot about Hyperion. So I'm excited to see what I think of it. I believe from what I gather, I could be wrong, I haven't read it yet. From what I gather is loosely, it's kind of like a Canterbury Tales of sci-fi because I believe this is kind of more a collection of, no of, of no connected novellas or connected short stories that it isn't like a one novel with one narrative, more like the Canterbury Tales which are unified, but they are still separate stories. I believe that's the situation with Hyperion. And I don't, I know there's sequels to Hyperion, and I don't know if they continue in that vein and are more stories. I don't know. That's really all I know is that it is widely discussed and that I think that's the structure of it. And we'll see how I do with that. Next up, I have a book that I did start in May, but then Alan gave me permission to defer finishing it to June. <laughs> that is Daughter of Red Winter by Ed McDonald. Now, I don't want you to take away from my deferring it that I dislike it in any way. In fact, I was really getting into it, but deadlines were coming up for books that I did need to finish by the end of May. And Alan and I plan to discuss this at the end of June anyway. So I was like, okay, whew, okay. I, then I have time to do the other things that I need to do and, and we can set this one aside and, and get to it when I have time for it. So I'm, I'm very excited to continue reading it and to chat about it with Alan. If you don't know, this is the beginning of Ed McDonald's new series. Um, I love Ed McDonald's first series, the Raven's Mark trilogy. Alan likes the first book in that trilogy. Tell him to go finish it. So, so far this is a um, pretty promising start to this series. I'm not super far into it, but what I have of what I've read of it, I am very intrigued. So looking forward to finishing this. The next book I have is a book of the month club book. And that is Darling Girl by Liz Mikulski? 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 It is, if it wasn't clear from the title and the cover, then the tagline will tell you that this is a retelling of Peter Pan. I love Peter Pan. I am obsessed with Peter Pan. And I, nine times out of ten, I am very disappointed slash angered by retellings or telling or, or works inspired by Peter Pan, I feel like most of the time they miss the mark. And um, my good friend Hillary over at Bookborn also loves Peter Pan. And I don't know how much experience she has with retellings of Peter Pan because I think she only recently read Peter Pan. And I was delighted that she loved it as much, loved it as much as I do. She's about to discover how bad retellings are. So when Book of the Month had this book up, I messaged Hillary and I was like, hey, there's this bridge I'm thinking of jumping off of you want to join me? And she said, yes, I will. So we both picked this book with the express understanding that neither of us expected to like it. <laughs> and we do plan to talk about it. Um, I haven't, we haven't talked about where, when, and how we would talk about it, but we do plan to talk about it. So I hope I'm wrong and that this is good. 
but I'm not expecting it. Next is my other book of the month club book, and that is Death on the Nile by Agatha Christie. Um, I've read I've read one other Poirot book before, Murder on the Orient Express, and I did not like it. I I like adaptations of it well enough, although I don't think that it really is one of my favorites, but it's one of the most well known. And the other most well known Poirot is Death on the Nile, and this edition of it is gorgeous. And I thought I should give Poirot another go, so. Here we go. I've seen nearly every adaptation there is of Death on the Nile, so I know the story. But I mean, I loved And Then There Were None by Agatha Christie. That is so far my favorite Christie that I've read. I have not read that much. And I knew the story. I had seen multiple adaptations of And Then There Were None before I read it. And I still found it to be really engaging, compelling, and chilling, etc, etc. So I, I know the story of Death on the Nile very well, like as well as you can possibly can without having read it. <laughs> so... I, I'm just interested to see if this works better for me and because I, I love Poirot, the adaptations with um, David Suchet. So I was really disappointed when I didn't enjoy the book Murder on the Orient Express. So I'm hoping that it's different with Death on the Nile also because this edition is really, really pretty. So I would want to like this. <laughs> Next up is uh, my patron book, I guess patron book club. I've seen other people call it a patron book club when they read together and I never have. I just call it a buddy read. Um, so we're going to try on for size patron book club. <laughs> see how that feels. My patrons and I are buddy reading, are, and I'm back to calling it a buddy read. We are, I'm doing a read along with my patrons, how about that, of The Dandelion Dynasty by Ken Liu. So last month we read Grace of Kings. Um, as of the filming of this video, we have not yet had our buddy read book club chat, whatever we're calling it. We will very shortly. And in June, we are moving along to Wall of Storms. Now, two things about this book. When I received it, I was like, excuse me <laughs> what is this this is this is this is huge now i will say i did notice after the fact because this one looked a little bit different i was like why does this look different and then i was like the publishing um imprint is different from the other ones i have and i was like what so i flipped it open and this is actually a uk hardcover because i did get the second hand i just i didn't realize the uk had hardcovers with this cover i guess they republished it with the pastel colors I thought that was just always the cover that they had, so it didn't occur to me that a, a Dandelion Dynasty book with the dark black cover design would ever be a UK edition, but it is. So I think, because this has been my experience with other UK editions that look extremely similar to the US editions, for example, I don't think it's in frame, but I have my Red Rising shelf over here, um, and I have multiple editions of Dark Age. And they look almost the same. The cover design is almost exactly the same and the color scheme is almost exactly the same. The UK editions are invariably a lot longer looking than the US editions. And I think they just either space it differently or use thicker paper or both because it's the same book, the same length of book. And this looks considerably chunkier than the US hardcovers that I confirmed are US hardcovers of Grace of Kings and Veiled Throne. So I don't think this one is actually that monstrously longer than the other two. It might be, but in my experience, UK books just are thicker. This is, regardless, it's still, I mean, even if it is down to spacing and thicker paper, it's still really long. So I'm told this is the best of the lot, which, you know, thank God if it is the longest one. I did really enjoy Grace of Kings, so I am looking forward to this, even if the size of it is daunting. Uh, the net, la yeah, the last two are both rereads, and they are both rereads that I am reading with Beautifully Bookish Bethany because they are both part of two different read-alongs we're doing in two different places. So on the podcast, Chapter 3 podcast, we are continuing the first law read-along with The Heroes by Joe Abercrombie. This will be my third time reading it. This will be Bethany's first time reading it. And I believe... No pressure, Hillary, but you did agree to this. <laughs> Hillary will be joining us for this episode as well, um, as she just read The Heroes. So I'm looking forward to chatting with the ladies about The Heroes. Um, my relationship with this book has changed over time, and um, I'm excited to revisit it again and see what I think of it this time, because this one, more than all the others, I think, has shifted in my estimation the most. Anyway, I'm always looking forward to Joe Abercrombie. It is always the highlight of my month. <laughs> and last is, again, the other read-along I'm hosting with Bethany. This is on our YouTube channels, um, our Sword of Truth read-along. And we are at The Faith of the Fallen by Terry Goodkind. And this will be on my channel. Now, the first time I read these books, Faith of the Fallen was my favorite. I have since heard that this is the one where people most begin to notice um, political commentary from Terry Goodkind. That was not on my radar when I first read it, and I did not pick up on it. I wasn't looking for it. Um... I didn't really know anything about Terry Goodkind or about what people think of those books when I was reading them. I was just reading them. And this was my favorite. 
um, when I read the books. So now that I have known, now that I know more about Terry Goodkind and what people think of him and what I think of him and his political leanings, now that I'm like prepped and uh, keyed into that being a thing in it, so like I know to look for it or we'll just be more aware of it if it happens, I am afraid <laughs> that I won't like it as much the second time. I'm hopeful that I will like it as much the second time because there's other things that people have said about Terry Goodkind that I've now gone back to read the books and having heard that and been like, nah, I don't think so. I don't agree with you. So we'll see. We'll see. Um, I'm generally looking forward to it because I remember it being a favorite. I think at the very least it might, you know, it might diminish a little in my estimation um, if I do notice more things that I didn't notice the first time uh, and, and I dislike them. But overall, I think the things that did work for me will still work for me. It just might be more of a mixed bag this time than it was the first time. So we'll see. Maybe it'll still be my absolute favorite, but I'll love it even more. Who knows? Um, but we'll know when we finish reading it and chat about it on my channel at the end of the month. So join us. And those are all the books that I will definitely read in June. There may be some others. This is a smaller TBR you might have noticed. Relatively. I mean, some of those books are massive. But I do think I have a little more wiggle room in June because a TBR is shorter relatively. And the Debbie Heard trial is over, which occupied a great deal of my May. So June is free and clear. And I have um, a number of projects that I've had in mind for some time, and I just have not had time uh, to do that. I mean, specifically, to, there's other like personal things that I also am looking forward to having the time to get done. But specifically for book two, I have some things in mind or have had in mind that I think I have time in June to get cracking on some of those. So those are, you know, just vague, vague, mysterious promises I'm making, but you know, get excited. <laughs> uh, whatever. Those are the books that I'm reading in June for sure. So let me know in the comments down below your thoughts and feelings about those books. Whatever you want, let me know. I post videos on Saturdays, other random times well, definitely Saturdays. So like and subscribe, join my Patreon if you feel so inclined, and I'll see you when I see you. Bye. <laughs>